It's coffee time. It has been so long since I've done like a legitimate coffee time. I really don't know where to start. I was trying to think to myself, all right, what do I want to, I should, I should try to collect my thoughts, figure out exactly what I want to talk about, how to begin with the entire Gamukon story, but there are other things that I want to mention and how do I do that? It was just, and it feels like we haven't been in the rhythm of coffee time for a while because I was in England for a week and a half which was amazing, by the way. I just want to make the blanket statement now that England was fantastic and Gemukon was amazing and the best way to round off the trip. But before England, we had PAX and like a couple of kind of normal days in the middle. But before that, like I was dealing with all this personal nonsense and I'm just excited to come back and try to get back into the rhythm and do my thing with all y'alls. But for now, like I promised from yesterday, I will be talking about Gemucon and trying not to leave a bunch of stuff out because every time somebody has asked me how Gemucon went, I tell them how it went and how great it was, but I always feel like I wind up leaving a huge detail out. And then later I go, oh, I forgot to tell them about this. So I've had a little bit of anxiety about making this video because I know I'm gonna leave something out and I'm gonna be so angry with myself. But I figure that's what's great about doing a daily show is that if I forget something, then tomorrow I can just be like, BT dubs, forgot to tell you about this. But before we talk about Gemukan, and here's where I might start to get muddy and forget what I even was making this video about and then wind up with like a 15 minute long video where I never once talk about Gemukan. No, I'm not gonna jinx myself <laughs> that way. But I have, Two bones to pick with you, England. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready for these bones because, oh, this is getting weird. That was a weird way to put that. I'm just gonna go right into it. First thing, why is it so hard to find iced coffee in England? It was bizarre. There were a couple of different coffee issues that I had with England. First one being iced coffee because Aaron and I both love iced lattes and we kept going to places, Costa, anywhere that there was a Costa, they would always make us an ice drink. And we were like, yeah. But the smaller coffee places and cafes, um, none of them would make us an ice drink. And you can't say, Dodger, it's because of the weather, because I am from Oregon and the Oregon weather is exactly like the England weather. And I can tell you for a fact, I have never once before this had a problem getting an ice drink, no matter where I went in America. So that was very strange. We kept wanting ice drinks. People were like, mm, no. The only time that it was guaranteed is if somewhere on the list of drinks, um, there was an iced something that was on there as, as a standard because otherwise they just wouldn't have any ice on hand. So they literally couldn't do it unless you were willing to like wait for ice to form from water. So that was strange. Bone number one. Other coffee bone to pick. It feels weird every time I say it now because now it feels like it's an innuendo. Anyway, other coffee bone to pick is that it was really hard to find filtered coffee. Like just normal drip coffee. Um, I drank a lot of Americanos while I was in England and Americanos are much stronger because it's just an espresso shot with water. Um, so <laughs> I kept drinking real strong coffee, which I'm okay with. But there were a couple of times there where I was like, I just want some normal coffee. And I feel like since I've been home, I have made a lot of just normal coffee. I'm on my third cup of coffee right now. Wait, did I show you my Sherlock Holmes museum mug? I can't remember if I was already like, look at this. This is the mug that I got at the Sherlock Holmes museum. Okay, and now we can move on. Yes, Americanos. I had to drink a lot of those and I am not a huge Americano person. I don't know why. It's just not a thing that I'm like super into, but uh, I, I started to to take a fancy to them over over time, specifically while I was at Gemukon because they had like a little cafe inside of the hotel. And I went there and I was like, do you have drip coffee? And they were like, mm, mm, no. And then I said, all right, well, can I get a latte, but with soy? or as everybody kept calling it soya, I guess that's the way that you ask for it there. I was like, Do you, can I get a latte with soya? And they were like, ah, no. <laughs> so I wound up just drinking a lot of Americanos. Um, what was the other thing? 
that I wanted to say before I jumped into GamuCon. Oh, I remember. The very first time on my show that I said Nottingham, I got so much flack from y'all. All of you that are originally from England gave me so much flack saying that I was pronouncing it wrong, which I can agree now that I've heard it said over and over and over again that yes, I was pronouncing it wrong. But everybody told me, you don't pronounce the H. That's what all of you kept telling me. And I can say now, after being there, that that is shenanigans. That is balderdash because everybody pronounced the H. It's not that you don't pronounce the H, it's that it's a soft H, not a hard H. <sighs> And now I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> now every time I go to pronounce it, I'm like, I know I'm saying this wrong. I don't know how to say this right anymore. I just, I can't. So I have a lot of issues. I have a lot of issues now trying to pronounce that word. And I'm going to avoid saying it as often as possible. But I did love that in that city, they have a Maid Marian way. I thought that that was hilarious. Also... My cat has become quite large while I've been gone, and I'm convinced that he does nothing when I'm not here. That he just he just gets all sad, and then when I get home, he wants to play fetch because he hasn't played fetch in forever. Hey! He's so silly. But yes, so those are, okay, I think I've covered everything, and now I can jump into actual GamuCon story. Okay, so on Thursday we got there. Um, it was a two hour drive from Heathrow because we went from, not Bristol, no, we went from Southampton because Southampton was where we had our meetup at the Hobbit pub and that was great. That was so much fun. You guys were amazing. And then um, we wound up driving, not driving, no, we took a train. We took a train to a place that I can't remember the name of. Oh my gosh, what was it called? It had a hilarious name. I can't remember it now. We took a train from place to a, to, a, to a place. And then we took like a fancy bus to Heathrow. And then Erin got on her plane because she wasn't going to GemuCon. So Erin got on a plane and went home to LA. She was amazing to travel with and so much fun. And then Jesse and I were picked up by Mancroft. I'm not going to refer to you by your actual name. Mancroft, if you are watching... I know that before this, you had no idea who I was, but if you wind up watching this video, I will only call you Mancroft because I think that name's hilarious. He was dressed up as Lara Croft, but like the man version, so he was Mancroft. Anywho, so Mancroft picked us up and it was a two hour drive to Nottingham and uh, we stayed at the, the hotel that the convention was in that I can't remember the name of now. But when we got there, I was very excited because we were each given like a little card that said free Wi-Fi. And I was like, oh, fantastic. That means that I can make videos and upload them even if they take a while, you know, I can just leave it. That would be great. As it turns out, when you are in a hotel with so many internet addicts, uh, the network gets a little bit overloaded. It turned out that I, even though when we first got there on Thursday night, I had internet. Um, by the time that like 11 o'clock p.m. rolled around, internet was not working in my room at all. And from that point on for the rest of the weekend, I had no internet in my room. So you might say, well, then why didn't you just upload it somewhere else? Unfortunately, there was nowhere else that I could possibly upload from without having to be there for at least 200 minutes, so saith YouTube. So I just didn't worry about it. I just honestly didn't make any videos while I was there. Also because I have never been to an event that, I'm trying to think of how to put this. I've never once been somewhere where everyone knew who I was. That was extremely rewarding and also a little bit overwhelming <laughs> because since I was in the same hotel that the convention was in, Pretty much any time I was outside of my hotel room, somebody recognized me and either wanted to talk to me or get a picture taken or an autograph. And it was incredible. But again, like a little bit overwhelming. I didn't really know how to handle that much attention because I typically just sit in my room and play video games and make videos by myself. I normally don't interact with that many people. Um, but you guys, all of you that were there were so 
amazingly sweet and respectful and I really loved it and I really loved meeting all of you. Um, but so that meant that the only place in the hotel where you could get internet was in reception. So there were a couple of times where I was like, okay, I really need to respond to this email or okay, I really need to do this like little piece of work. Even if I'm not making a video, I need to like, like do a couple of things. So I'd go down into reception and I'd try to be working on something and there was always, you know, a, f a few times during me writing this email that I would have to stop and, and uh, talk with somebody, but it, Honestly, I would not have traded it for the world. It was incredible. And both Jesse and I um, said that we would love to come back next year. So if you're somebody who didn't get to go this year, or you were worried that this was going to be the only time we were ever in England, and you uh, missed your chance to like meet us, we're both probably going to be back. And we might be doing... We're, we're talking loosely about possibly um going for a week again and doing like meetups in um ireland and scotland and then coming back and some of you might be saying what about wales i don't know why not go to wales right let's do all three whatever we'll figure it out <laughs> but um it was great to come back to england because the first time that i was there i feel like i didn't see as much so this time I got to see a lot and I would love to, this is a, this is like a side note, but I would love to um, go back to Scotland. I'd love to go back to Ireland and really like see a lot of stuff. Uh, but yeah, so where was I? So Thursday, yes, we had internet for like a couple hours and then it was gone for the rest of the time. And then um, like right off the bat started meeting people and that was really fun. Friday. Uh, we didn't have anything technically to do until like two o'clock. So we both kind of slept in and then um, uh, I went down into reception and I was on Twitter and I guess Jesse saw that I was on Twitter and was like, you want to get breakfast? And I was like, sure. So we wound up getting breakfast with um, a Shibuzi fellow. Shibuzi is, is Jesse's like community of dudes and uh and ladies i shouldn't just say dudes because that implies that they are all male even though i use dudes for everybody but um <laughs> it, they were awesome they were so great all of you shibuzi people if you are watching this video right now you were so fantastic and so sweet and i loved spending as much time with you guys as i did but uh we wound up having a meal and i got oh my gosh there are so many things that i wish i had taken the time to to place out here so that I could be like look at this um I have a a uh oh, oh god oh what's it called from Game of Thrones the coin the like the like faceless men coin um I was given one of those and it's amazing oh gosh where is it where did I put that I think it's in my wallet which is still in my suitcase so you're not going to see it, unfortunately, because otherwise I would be like, hold on. And then I'd have to unpack the entire thing. But um, that was fantastic. And then we went back and met so many people because a bunch of people were in line for the two o'clock thing was a podcast for the Geek Show. And Jesse and I were both on it. And so was Tom Ska. And uh, we all just kind of like hung out and, hi, kitty. Are you about to jump in front of me? I knew it. I knew it, you attention whore. He hasn't been nearly as bad. Um, he did not wake me up all night. I actually have no jet lag. I woke up at 6 a.m., which is not bad. Huh. 6 a.m. isn't that bad. And he was not pestering me to play fetch at 3 in the morning. So I really appreciated that because I got to sleep. And maybe get myself back on the right track. But anyway, so we wound up um, going into kind of their main hall and doing the podcast. And that was super fun. And uh, and then right after that was, Kitty, I'm going to put you down because you're rubbing your face against the microphone. And I don't know whether or not that's being picked up. But uh, yeah, so we did this podcast and it was super fun. And I'm honestly not sure where it goes up. But uh, if you would want to see it, I can probably find out where it is. And um, 
Yes. So we did that, and then immediately after that was opening ceremonies, which there is also a video of opening ceremonies if you wanted to see that. Literally the only moment that I'm there is when they introduce me, and I run up and basically say, Hi, my cat and I are on the internet, and we make videos. And then I handed the microphone back and just walked off. So I did not do much in the opening ceremonies, but they were hilarious because apparently when people got their badges, they also got a cupcake which apparently was a terrible idea because there were tons of people who weren't very respectful and were smashing their cupcakes against the wall, along banisters, just all sorts of awful things. And then it turned into this big joke that you were actually just r supposed to rub the cupcake all over your body, um, which then devolved into another aspect of the rules which was called no gemu babies i.e don't be caught banging somewhere and um <laughs> there were there were there was a nice set of rules that wound up happening in the opening ceremonies and continued on throughout the entire weekend but uh yeah so the opening ceremonies were very fun and i don't think that we had anything else that happened that day on friday i'm trying to think I think that I was done after that. Was I done after that? Now I'm second guessing myself. Um, but that's also where I met um, Eri Senpai and Saya Shinigami. They're two cosplayers and they were the ones who wound up being judges for the cosplay masquerade with me. And so I met them at the opening ceremonies and we all sat together and that was super fun. They were both so sweet and from Belgium and I miss Belgium and I love it. So apparently Belgium is where French fries were created and we called them French fries. Americans did, um, called them French fries, but apparently they should actually be Belgium fries. Now, you know, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what I even did that night. Because I remember, I remember what I did the other night, <laughs> but I don't remember what I did that night. This is so weird. See, this is one of those gaps, one of those moments where later I'm going to be like, oh, you silly Billy, you did this thing. Why didn't you say that? Give me a second. Give me just a split second. In the meantime, I can show you my other mug that I bought. The Game Tea people were there. Um, so at the top of the hotel, level 10, was, whoa, my computer just tripped balls. At the top on level 10 was like the gaming area and it was also the merchandise area. And Gamer Tea was there and they uh, they had a Kickstarter a while back, but they also um, do Niles -y shirts from Yogscast. And he contacted them and told them to give us free Nilesy t-shirts and I love mine. It is so comfortable, but they also have all these really, really cool designs like a Dishonored design and um, all sorts of other things. And it was really fun. And they also had mugs and the girls that were there were so sweet. If you're watching this, you guys were just the sweetest people ever. Um, they offered to just give me this. And I was like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this from you. Don't be silly, but I love this mug. <laughs> it's just so simple, but it looks so cool. I was like, this mug is fantastic. And they have a bunch of other mugs too. If, um, if you're interested in those, it's game tea. They were great. Awesome people, super sweet. And, uh, that entire floor was awesome. It smelled like, you know, a bunch of gamers were in there constantly, but it was really cool being up there. There was a lot going on. And, uh, yeah, I honestly can't remember what I did on Friday night. But Saturday in the morning, we had pre-judging for the cosplay masquerade. It was interesting because um, I worked in the costume shop for so long and did props for so long. But I've never been in a position where I had to look at a costume and judge how it was made. That was very interesting for me um, and really fun. Not fun in like a power hungry sort of way, like I get to decide whether or not you did good at this, but in a, 
I don't know. It was it was kind of like I there was this section of my brain that had studied costumes for so long, but I hadn't used it in a long time. So getting to interact with these people, um, and again, I'm going to say this all the time, every time I, I reference a group of people that I was with, any of you who are part of the Cosplay Masquerade, you were all so awesome, and I loved all of your costumes, and it made me sad that I had to choose a winner. But um, it was so interesting getting to like talk with you guys and say, like, tell me how you made your costume, and and hearing the process and being able to look at like the edges and the way that some things were done it was just so cool and it's hard because you know some costumes are obviously going to be more difficult than others we had a, a pit who made you know full-on wings uh, what, the, what was that i just heard something happen upstairs um and uh like the dishonored mask and like so many things it's just really 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 cool so the the like pre pre judging section was basically getting an up close look at the costume and judging um, the quality of it and the difficulty of it and uh, whether or not it was accurate to the original things like that which it was really interesting. Sometimes you had to really think about it, like, oh, I don't know, because this is a spin off of this, it's not the actual thing, and et cetera, et cetera. So um, that was really fun, really, really cool. And then later getting to actually do the masquerade and watch everybody, you know, take their poses and things. Oh, it was so much fun. I loved that. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. What else happened on Saturday? I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna blank on a lot of stuff. Kitty, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna lay on your keyboard so that you have to pay attention to me. Huh, what are you doing? Um, what else happened on Saturday? Saturday we did, wait, was cosplay on Sunday? Oh shoot, am I getting everything all mixed up now? Hold on. Yes, I am. All of the cosplay stuff was on Sunday. Saturday was the day that we did Q and A's. Okay, wait. All right, wind it back. So Saturday, <laughs> we did a Q and A with Jesse in the Littlewood, Kai Dream, and Dave Chaos. It was like a full TGS Q and A, and the room was completely full. And we had so many funny questions and so many good questions and we all got to like chit chat. And it was cool because um, earlier on in the week when we were in Bristol was the first time that I had met um, in the Littlewood and Kai like face to face. So I got to actually, you know, talk with them. And that way when we actually did the Q&A, it wasn't like weird, like, oh, hey, I kind of know you, but not really, you know. Uh, so that was really fun. And it went on for a couple of hours. And then we also had a nighttime Q&A that was the TGS After Dark Q&A. But um, Kai and Inalilwood had to leave. So it was just me, Jesse, and Dave Chaos in this really tiny room. They, I don't want to say that they severely misjudged how many people were going to be interested in this. It was more like, hmm... It was more like they knew that they didn't have the big room. So they said, all right, only this number of people are going to get in. But then they just let people keep coming in until the room was packed. It was an awful fire hazard, but so fun. And one of you, oh gosh, I wish I remembered like a lot of your names, but I just don't. One of you had made homemade mead and gave us bottles of homemade mead. Mine was apparently the stronger one. I thought that it tasted awesome. It was super spicy, not like hot spicy, but it had a lot of spices in it, or it tasted that way. And then um, Jesse's was a little bit lighter, but a little bit sweeter as well. And I thought that they both tasted amazing. Apparently mead is very strong. I don't know. I felt fine, but what can you do? The mead tasted delicious. So I can officially say that I had mead while I was there and it was great. Uh, and, um, trying to think if there was anything in between those Q&As that I did. I don't think there is. I wound up just like, I got so hungry at one point. 
I wound up just like walking around the city trying to find something really quick to eat. I wound up finding like these little chicken things and just annihilating them i was so hungry and then when we got to the late night q a jesse hadn't eaten at all he had basically just been drinking all day and i was like this is gonna go so poorly or so well i can't tell but uh it was really fun both q a's were really really fun and then yes sunday is when we had the masquerade and I had a little break in between the prejudging and the actual masquerade. But immediately after the masquerade, this is why I realized that, it w- that I was getting my days mixed up. Immediately after the masquerade, we had um, the closing ceremonies. And closing ceremonies were really fun. And, you know, kind of like a roundup of everything. And then immediately after the closing ceremonies, Jesse and I had a let's play that we did together that was silly because we were doing it with a projector. We were playing, um, oh gosh, what is the name of that game? Fatal Frame 2, but it's called something different in England. I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, and the game was awful. But what sucked was that if there was any light in the room at all, Nobody could see the projected image. So we were just commenting on this game, but nobody could see it. And eventually, finally, at some point, we had most of the lights out and people could see everything. But um, I don't know. I feel like I would love to do that again, but make sure that people could actually see what's going on because otherwise it's just, it's not going to work out. It's not as good. But we reamed that game because the controls are awful the controls were horrendous and it was a one player game so there were a couple of times where i was trying to play and i could not get it to work and so jesse finally just like just went for it and got it to work worked so hard at it i was like oh no um and then after that sunday was a full day after that there were two people that in the charity auction had spent a decent amount of money to grab dinner with all of the guests. So that, uh, that included um, me, Jesse, uh, Saya Shinigami, and Eri Senpai. And, uh, and then the like, Rilak, the guy who had put on the entire thing, who was so amazing. And then uh, these, the two guests. And they were so nice and it was so fun. We went to a place called Nando's that is basically like a, here, you get chicken and you get to tell us how hot you want the chicken to be. And so we all kind of like sat and, and got our food. And I felt so bad because Saya asked for um, like a chicken pita, but they had put like no chicken in there. And so Jesse was like, here, do you want half of my wrap? And she was like, okay. But he had asked for a super hot wrap. So she was like trying to eat it. She was like, this is so hot. <laughs> I felt so bad for her. I was like, oh, you poor thing. You just wanted, you just wanted your normal pita with chicken and it all just, this is, but, um, the guests were great and, uh, and we had a lot of fun. I thought we had a lot of fun. They had never had hummus before. So we made them eat hummus because we're horrible people. And, uh, and there was a, a black bottle of hot sauce that both of them tried and said that it wasn't that hot. And then Jesse tried it and almost choked. So that was funny. And um, I think neither of them had ever had uh, sangria before. And at Nando's, they make their own sangria. And so I was like, I wonder how this is. We should get it. So we got it. It was delicious, by the way. So that was fun. Um, yeah, that was <laughs> that's me telling you about our entire meal. But they were both great, and if you're watching, if either of you are watching, um, thank you so much for spending that much for charity. That was fantastic, and we really loved being able to hang out with you, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, and after that, we I know, it keeps going. After that, we went to D&D, and it was amazing! That D&D game was so great. To all y'all that were in our D&D campaign, The Adventures of Purple Smoke Baby, it was perfect. It was so much fun. Jesse, especially drunk Jesse, is hilarious to play D&D with because he just like 
like just thinks of ridiculous things and does them and you wind up going all right yeah sure (laughs) um and it was you know it was like a a small campaign and we all got little like pieces of notebook paper and um just hung out and played D &D, and that was so fun because i love D D so much but i haven't played four point enough where like (laughs) if i'm asked to make a roll I can't immediately think of what skill I should be rolling with or anything like that because I'm still so used to 3.5 and they consolidate a lot of things in 4 points. So I was like, oh, this is hard. But everybody was very patient and you were all awesome to play with. And there were lots of lols. There's actually, um, I think, four videos of us playing up on the internet. If you would like to see those, I can link you to the first one if you want. Um, It was great. It was really, really fun. It was like the perfect way to round off the entire weekend and and really kind of like capture the whole feeling of the weekend as well. Just being able to sit and play D&D with a bunch of people that I just met and I don't know, just like hang out and have fun. Um, and the night before on Saturday night, just backing up a little, the night before on Saturday night, uh, Jesse took... All of the Shibuzi people out to dinner, and I wound up going with them, and that was super, super fun again. And uh, and yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I said one more time that all of the people at Shibuzi are the sweetest and the most amazing. And I don't know, just like everybody I met was so nice, was so sweet. And then on Monday, I wound up like hopping on a plane and going home, which is weird because you're eight hours ahead in England. So when you're coming back, it's a ten and a half hour flight, but you have to subtract like eight hours. <laughs> so you're like, all right, so I left at three. Um, well, we left at four and then we landed in Los Angeles at 630. Isn't that weird? Like it was a ten and a half hour flight, but we went back in time. So like <laughs> it was just so it was so bizarre. I don't know. Going back the other way is always very strange. And going to there, you feel like you just lost so much time. But, I don't know. This is a long video. But I just, yeah, just wanted to tell you guys all about GameCon because I wound up not making any videos because I wanted to make sure I was interacting with people. Um, And I don't know, whenever I have the camera, I feel like there's this weird wall up because I'm thinking more about what's happening on the camera and not the person that I'm interacting with. And since so many of you knew who I was and really wanted to meet me, I didn't want there to be that weirdness there. So um, yeah, again, everybody was amazing. And if I left anything out, I'm so sorry, but uh, that's, that's honestly right now as much as I can remember. And I, I just loved it. I can't wait to come back next year and hopefully see some more things and maybe see some of you guys again. Um, and GamuCon people, there better be another D&D night because I want to continue that game. I'm going to make Jesse come. We're all, we're all going to play that game again. It's going to be amazing. Yes. Is there anything else? I think I'm probably done. But uh, yeah, thank you for listening to this amazingly long video about GemuCon. And again, if uh, if you want to come next year, I think that it's going to be bigger and better. So there are going to be more tickets available, I believe. And you should totally come because it was really, really, really fun. And uh, I am glad to be home, but I had a great time. And that's it. The end. So I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Mwah!